welcome everyone to this week's Cat's Eye on the Future. First, I would like to thank my listeners for being understanding during this period when I have not been able to produce shows as regularly as I would like. My husband and frequent guest Cabell doctor continues to improve in health-wise, but he's still looking at some rather major surgery sometime in the next few weeks, so I may be offline again. However, for now, I wanted to get back online with a look at the cards and runes for the general energies between now and the end of this year, which will be around December 2015. I have also reviewed some of my past prediction shows, and it looks like this time period is most certainly where things were he we were headed towards when last spring I saw hints of the EU going from a period of kind of joy and relaxation to just suddenly almost overnight one of feeling trapped and just really stopped in its tracks. Back then in May of 2015, I said on the show, the feelings of despair, hopelessness, and being trapped at this reality and the bursting bubble in the EU seemed partly rooted, caused, and or affected by something either legal or potentially karmic. The seeds of the problem, incident, or situation are likely to be found in some sort of failure to communicate or directives from on high that may fail to take the total situation, whatever is going on at that time, under consideration. Or it could just be a total communications mix-up. And then I said, well, I don't know what the nature of the event or potential events are that causes such a sudden reversal of hope for, hopeful fortune for Western Europe. I don't know exactly what it is. I can say that it either will happen probably in the next three months or at least around the end of the summer, kind of at the latest. So, you know, fall is, was kind of like the, I really didn't even see it going on that long. I saw it happen before the end of summer. And of course, at that time, coming back to the present, I, I just couldn't get a clue as to what might cause such a thing. I mean, such an outpouring of what seemed like great joy and freedom, and then to have it suddenly all collapse, and, and followed by this, like what I saw is just a great deal of hopeless despair, and, you know, just real upset. I can now say that it's pretty obvious that what I was picking up on and the cards were pointing at was the, so far at first, you know, in the spring, things seemed to be improving a bit economically in Europe. Uh, people were feeling better about things. There was kind of a sense of optimism. And also there was initial welcome given to the first refugees. There was a great deal of joy when people were rescued from the sea. There was a lot of sorrow when people, when, you know, with lots of pictures when the, when the babies died. But people were happy and people were showing up with signs saying, welcome, welcome. And then suddenly there was a backlash. You know, suddenly you had pictures of streams of people just walking in. And, you know, it, it, the, the press made it seem, you know, possibly even worse than it really was. I mean, it was pretty bad. But it, you just had, like, these pictures of streams of people walking in. And then you had, you know, what seemed to be just boats coming constantly. And there were pictures of camps. And things. It was like the atmosphere changed almost overnight. And then, of course, that, that initial backlash to these numbers of people coming in was followed by the recent bombings of Paris, and that really resulted in the total lockdown of Europe. I mean, I'm recording this in the last week of November, and it, even at the start of this week, Brussels, which is the capital sort of of the EU, supposedly, it was on complete lockdown for like three or four days. I mean, no schools, no subway, no curfew. That's just unheard of. I mean, you have to shut down a major Western city like that. So I think the term trapped that I saw in the spring is pretty accurate. Um, also, I, I later took another look at things in, in late July, and again, especially for Europe and the EU, I reported on a reading my husband and I did that was sort of a little bit off stage. We didn't do that whole reading on the show, but I reported on it because I, I had done some other readings and we wanted some clarification. And the reading my husband and I did that I reported on showed Europe being hit by both ice or ISA, which is being trapped or stagnating. But even more importantly here, that there would be like a giant hit of some sort. We got the Hagalash rune, which is the hailstone. And the hailstone would strike without warning and pretty much change everything. The hailstone would be some sort of event, either probably people caused or human caused, could have been a natural disaster, but something would strike and it would change everything. 
at that time and in the later readings, I, again, I wasn't certain exactly what the hail strike was going to be. Only this is the important thing. We would know for certain when it hit. Everyone would kind of know. It would be really obvious that such a thing had happened and that it had changed things. Now, on one of my forums that I frequent and I do some readings for, I also mentioned towards the end of September that Hagawash seemed to be scoring a direct hit probably on Europe itself. It really felt like Europe, but the echoes would reach out further and probably affect the world economy in some way. Again, I can say fairly certainly now that that first hail strike was the attack on Paris, which changed the entire perspective and atmosphere, at least here in Western Europe and to agree the Western world. And it may have been followed by a second hail strike in the past few days when Turkey shot down a Russian warplane, which was over disputed airspace. I think it likely that Paris is the initial hail strike, that really big one, that big hogelage, is simply because it just colors the way everything in the world looks at events since it happened. I mean, it just really does change things. But hail tends to come in storms, and you can get more than one hailstorm. So I think this period may be kind of an ongoing time of other hail strikes that may hammer down first on Europe, but also on the rest of the world. And I think the the Turkish um, Russian incident is one of those. I also think, and this will make more sense when I get into the rest of my reading, that even though there is nothing obviously being seen right away, if there are more events that happen, particularly either before or around the time of this broadcast, we can still think of that as still part of that particular hailstorm. There, I don't know that there will be yet another event, but there could be. But just think of them as strikes coming down that hit like little hammers. But the big one has already, the, the biggest stone has probably hit, at least for this time period. Now, because the situation is so fluid, Rather than looking specifically at the events in Paris or Turkey, I mean, I could do that. I, I, I've done those sorts of readings where I just say, what is going to be the implications? I think I'd rather just do a general reading and see what comes up. It'll, it'll be sort of for a shorter time than usual. It'll just be for December because I like to do a yearly sort of forecast in January. But I think this is an important five or six weeks, and I think people right now are very anxious about the future. So I want to give my listeners a preview of the overall energies that are going to make certain events more or less likely between now and just the end of the year. Now, like astrology, these energies and cards don't always predict actual events. Sometimes I get a psychic flash or a feeling, and I'll mention that, but it's it's more like giving us a chance to make educated guesses because like an astrology window for things to happen these are kind of card windows that give us and rune windows that give us directions the way the world might be going okay so with that really long introduction which i felt was necessary because i wanted to go over some of the background and explain some of what we were doing let, let's move on to our general reading for the next five six weeks max my question this time is what are the most likely energies or events coming up for now, which I did the reading on November 25th, 2015. That was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving for those in the States. And the end of the year, this year, December 31st, 2015. And I get some interesting cards, and not really quite what I was expecting. Um, the first card of the Psy card group of our reading is the Libido card. This card is as close as this deck gets to the more traditional, what we call the lover's card. But in this deck, rather than stressing romance so much, it's more about the primal and hidden motivations behind human sexuality and life force. It, it's about drive. This deck is very Jungian, so, you know, think about conveyor or confects, whatever you think it's all about sex. That's kind of, yeah, it's Freudian joke, but it's, it's that idea of the deep, deep motivations behind sex, not just about having a romantic encounter. The libido card itself, to describe it, shows a lovely paradise of lush grass, colorful flowers, and, you know, pretty leaves, plus a waterfall. Uh, and on the grass, we have these two peacocks, and they're busy display fighting. They're, they're courting a peahen who's right off the card. We don't see her 
but we kind of know she's there. But the cockerels are so busy, you know, sort of dancing and fighting with each other, they're not noticing the snake in the grass, which could strike and kill either of them or even the peahen at any moment. So in addition to the beauty and joys of love and sensuality on this card, there's more than a hint of combative display and distraction, distraction that can go even to the point of missing something that's a mortal threat, something that's a danger to your very life, much less your love life. I think during this current time period for current events reading, my hunch is this card is telling us about several things, several energies that may kind of be fighting each other during the next five or six weeks and may even continue into the next year. These are some intense motivations and moves on the part of some towards distraction from a pleasant news and events. As well as there's going to be a tendency during this time to ignore the real danger in favor of being drawn towards that which is entertaining, both dangers that seem more entertaining and also things that are simply more entertaining. Now, some of this will just be self-imposed. I mean, this is going to be a natural reaction to people who are going to get tired and kind of shell-shocked of a constant strain of threat level, threat level, scare, scare, be scared. And some of it will be intentionally distractions put on for us on the part of the powers that be that would prefer people be nations, individuals, groups to look away from what they're really up to and or what's really going on and and towards what these people would like us to see so we've got it, it's like the public is getting what the public kind of wants because after there's only so much gloom and doom you can take before you want to like look someplace else distractions i think will include actual positive things i mean they're good things like making a joyful home for the holidays um, and even, you know, people enjoying ritual combat of sporting events. I mean, those are traditional on both sides of the water during this, what in the West is the holiday season of Yuletide. You get, you know, soccer matches, you get football games, you get parades, you get um, caroling, you get all of these things which are traditionally were used by people to distract themselves in the, in, you know, in the Middle Ages and, and later from the dark time of the winter, you wanted some color and you wanted some distraction. Well, now it's going to be able to play on that meme. There's going to be more than the usual tendency to want to do that and to kind of hide. However, this card is also, this has, does have the seeds of romance in it. And romantic entanglements, both of the positive and negative kind, are, are going to be, you know, partial for the season as well. I mean, I don't want to give this card an entirely negative slant because usually when it shows up, especially at the start of a reading, it's a positive one. I'm just not sure how positive it's going to be over the next few weeks because rather than love, this card in, is often as much about lust and basic drives that humans have to survive as well as the need for romance and procreation. And somehow I feel those intense underlying drive factors just may be more powerful on a current events level for the next few weeks. I also expect you may see, like, some of the distractions may even be about ce celebrity romances, celebrity divorces, uh, maybe even a, a feel-good movie or two with, with, you know, a love interest in it. I, like I said, it's not all negative, but it's just remember that there's a healthy need. On the one hand, there's a very healthy need on all our parts to not just concentrate on the bad stuff, but we also want to make sure that we don't get so distracted that we ignore that snake in the grass, either as individuals or as um, nations and organizations. I think that's the real important message of the card during this time period. Now, the next card is the scales. And in many decks, this is called the judgment card. It's another reason why I came down on the more negative and distraction sides of the libido card as opposed to the joyful making of babies aspect side, which also exists. The scales card shows the scales with apples on it, weighing back and forth, but not decided yet. And it indicates a period where things are kind of hanging in the balance. They're being judged or weighed. The final decision or outcome of a situation isn't here yet. But it is coming. It's being worked on and it may be starting to happen. In fact, without getting too far ahead of myself, this actually looks like a time period in which a lot of things could happen 
but they probably won't yet. Instead, they're going to be a lot of things that are more likely to bubble, brew, and they set themselves up for what probably happens next in the new year or very soon in the new year. Now, I say that because the next cards are the father who is showing a young man how to shoot a bow and point in the right direction. So he's, it's the father teaching his son how to shoot and point his arrow. And then there's the sage card which is a wise old man sitting in front of his books, reflecting on his knowledge, and he's also writing his observations in his own hand for the future. In previous readings, mostly more than a year ago, but still important here, the father card has shown up quite a few times when Vladimir Putin has been in the news. Now, one of the titles of the Tsar was always Little Father. And I think in this reading, the card applies both to Putin himself as a little father, but also to other world leaders who were pointing their people, their tribes, their nations, and their militaries in the way they think they should go. Because the thing about the father card is, you know, you really can't tell from the picture if this man is teaching his son to hunt for food for the table, if he's teaching his son to protect the tribe, or to make war on his enemies. All of those things could be part of the learning to shoot a bow and arrow, and we just don't know what it is we have to take the card in context. Here we have it pretty much stuck between judgment and wisdom in terms of symbols. So it could be looked at as being stuck between karma or retribution and wisdom and deep thought. So we, we have the arrows being pointed, but they're kind of in some direction we don't know yet, but on the one side they're balancing karma and retribution, on the other side, wisdom and thinking about it first. I think this may be the direction the world's energies are going over in the next four or five weeks or so. And I think at least the way Putin and maybe some of the other world leaders are going, they're kind of at this, they're taking time to make judgments and gain wisdom, or at least they're being given time to make judgments and gain wisdom if they so choose to take it. They can at least, or they can at least, you know, look and listen to their advisors before becoming, coming to a full decision on what to do next. That doesn't mean everyone's going to do this, but it means the energy is very much there for them to do so. And this fits pretty well with my previous reading that suggested that while Russia and the U.S. may visit their relationship and that things may strain to the point where some player probably a smaller one. This was a prediction I made, I believe, in September. It would, someone would really like to use nukes. They probably won't, at least not before spring. And if a nuclear weapon is used in a conflict b before the end of this year or before the spring, it would probably not be initiated directly by the U.S. and Russia, at least not right now. So we, it fits in, it, it ties in together. There's stuff going on behind the scenes. Yes, I'm, I'm sure that there is some, particularly now after the, the Turkish Russian jet incident, there's probably individuals and people who would, groups that would like to use a nuclear weapon. It's probably not going to happen, at least not yet. So we have a lot of decision making, studying, and finally, interestingly enough, we have a certain amount of trying to make a good show of looking like each group is correct, or at least looking attractive um, to, to the world, or as they would like to be seen as attractive. I can say this because the beauty card is the final card of our side card group. And while I think this can also represent female leaders, as it often does, I this card came up several times earlier this year, and I suggested that this card, this year, that, that 2015 would be a year, the year of the strong woman. And so we, again, see hints that people like Angela Merkel uh, in Germany, Christine Lagarde at the IMF, um, people like Hillary Clinton and other powerful women, not just politicians, but also in other realms, are, may play a, a, power, a strong role here in the next five weeks. We may even see a particular individual rise up and do something uh, interesting or unexpected. I also think the beauty card here is about nations or groups themselves trying to put on a beautiful face. In other words, they want to look good for the cameras. And they're all going to do their best in the next few weeks to try to outshine the other. Now, how this is done may depend on a group's values. 
Um, you know, we can say that Daesh or the terrorists perhaps projecting themselves in terms the West will find increasingly evil, but which to them may seem good. So, you know, trying to look good is going to be kind of relative. Well, countries like, say, Turkey uh, may try to claim their innocence, that they haven't done anything or that they're really wonderful. And the United States is probably going to do its best to appear in a good light. Russia's going to try to appear in a good light. The UK's and the EU are all going to try to appear like everything's fine, everything's wonderful, and we're all so beautiful and, you know, aren't we great? There's just definitely the sense of that. And it's this is just a time period traditionally in the West for a lot of glitter and glam anyway. I mean, dressing up and pretending that everything is beautiful and happy for the holiday season I think goes on on every level from that of people's homes at Christmas or, you know, Christmas or related holiday dinners, Yule, Hanukkah, this sort of thing. You know, in any festival that you celebrate in the winter time, people get together at home and they try to be happy and they try to put a good face on things. And I think we're going to extend that to the whole society. There's going to be pressure to do this on a lot of levels, to do this kind of, it's all great, it's all fine, and we look we, we look okay. If the world is very lucky, perhaps even some really beautiful things may actually happen, just like those happy, feel-good movies or really cool romances. We may even have some really nice things happen, really feel-good stories that will be great and help us get through this period. But again, I'm not really getting a highly positive feel about the beauty card at this time. It feels almost more... this The beauty card can be either things that are really beautiful, but they can also be kind of vanity and glamour. And, and 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 sometimes the, the, either the use or misuse of what we can think of as feminine power, and in this case, I, I think it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, for individuals, you can do it better. You can use this time to to project beauty and find beauty in the world. But I, I honestly don't think that's how it's going to play out current events wise. You have been listening to part one of Cat's Eye on the Future. We'll return to the show right after these short messages. Do you have questions? The cards have answers. If you would like a personal reading with Melody, just go to my website, MelodyPsychicReadings.com That's Melody with an I, PsychicReadings.com For information, or email me at melodyreader at gmail.com. Readings are available using Skype, phone, email, or even in person if you are lucky to live in Ireland. Why not find out what special messages the cards have just for you and book a private reading today? We now return to part two of Cat's Eye on the Future. Now that said, I want to finish up with the side cards here, and we're going to move on to the kitty cat cards. We're going to go back to the cat's eye tarot deck, which I haven't used the last few readings because I've been more in a hurry, but this time I was able to take more time and sit down and do a more complete reading. Now, in the cat's eye tarot deck, I get an even stronger impression of both Russia and to a degree the rest of the world standing back, taking stock, and deciding what in the world they want to do next. It, it came out some of the side card reading, but it gets repeated with the cat deck. Just because the first card I got is the hermit, who in the cat's eye deck is an old streetwise black tomcat who walks alone by himself, but will accept the occasional companionship of humans in his own terms. He waits for his chosen human being to bring a bowl of scraps from a nearby cafe, his human is troubled, and the cat will offer comfort on his own terms in exchange for the gift of some food. To me, this card combines with the wisdom card of the previous set to suggest a stepping back, taking stock, but in the case of the hermit, acting alone if necessary to do what needs to be done and on his own terms. So there is a potential for action there, but the hermit will not be hurried, nor will he make his decisions based on the will of others though he may choose to ally with them if he feels so inclined to do so. 
he may also advise or seek wisdom and guidance before acting. Again, if this sounds like a certain world leader, I think there's a reason for that. Again, I don't think our friend in Russia is the only one, but I think that he in particular may be listening to this card. Right next to the Hermit card is the Lover's card, which is pretty much the same card as in the Libido deck. I mean, excuse me, the Libido card in the Psy card deck that started this whole reading and therefore influences the whole reading. The difference is that in the Cat's Eye deck, the card is more about partnerships, alliances, and even even more about love than it is in the Libido card. The element of distraction or even yearning for a new situation is there in this card, but it's less pronounced. On this card, two Norwegian forest cats, who were themselves part wildcat. I know this because we used to breed forest cats. They're, they're wonderful kitties. And in this case, the kitties are sitting by the window. The, the tiny female is content to sit under her large male's protective paw. Forest cats, interestingly enough, tend towards sexual dimorphism, meaning the male is much larger than the female. So this isn't just the artist, the veterinarian who's making the cards being, you know, sexist or something. This is really what the cats look like. So you, you have this large male over the little female, um, protecting her in some way. And the female is content in her situation. She's very happy to be there. But the male is looking out the window as if pondering his options. He's not at rest. He's not necessarily unhappy, but he feels kind of restless, like he may need to reach further out. He feels the call of the wild and back to the native forests of Norway, even while sitting in the warm tame. In the distance outside the window, if you really look on the card, there's a potential rival on the fence in the form of another tomcat. Now, if he went outside, he could do battle and fight for dominance and perhaps find another female. The question is, will our tom in the house Will he want to stay in the warm with his appointed mate? Or will he leap out the window and engage in combat with the unknown and face all those risks? Again, I feel the pull of this last decision more than I do the romantic love from this card during this time period when it comes to current events. Which does not mean that for individuals, a double lover-lover's card cannot provide some great energy during this period for something like a planned engagement, a winter wedding, a hot day, even, you know, a, a new relationship. It just means that in a macro sense, uh, it feels more about alliances, decisions, and distractions, you know, on that kind of upper level, rather than a great outpouring of fraternal good feelings and holiday cheer on the part of, you know, international relations. That That's all. But yes, on the, uh, on the personal level, this is actually a great time for romantic relationships because we have the lover's card not once but twice. I felt seriously drawn to pick a third card. I usually don't with the cat's eye tarot deck, but I, this time I really felt I should. And I've learned not to ignore those feelings. And I can see why, because this third card really helped clarify things a bit. We, we've had a lot of really macro stuff, but this now we get the kitten of the Five of Pentacles. And on this card on the Five of Pentacles, this is an older kitten. He's playing with a garbage bag in an alley. Already his little ears are ragged and his eyes look a bit infected, but he's still trying to play. He's also protecting an even smaller kitten, maybe a younger sibling, as both sit by an empty food dish, hoping that someone will come by and place something in it. This card is about poverty, physical neglect, hard times, difficulty, and the risk of spiritual poverty as a result. But it can also be about charity. That's, that's the food bowl we see there. And being willing to accept help when needed, rather than, than having too much pride to allow any sort of assistance. And it's also kind of about carrying on. The kitten continues to try to play, and he also tends to protect what he has and what he can. He, he's still concerned about others. I think this sense of hard times, both physical and spiritual, is likely to overshadow the energies in the next few weeks for a lot of people. Both in terms of those in the more developed world feeling kind of overwhelmed and they're kind of frightened, both by the physical threats and the be scared, be scared, be scared, and the potential economic issues that have been ongoing where you hear sort of, you know, banks going doom, 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 doom for a while. And, you know, and it could get, this news could get even worse. 
and, and there's just a sense of poverty and homelessness in other parts of the world that I think is leading to some of the conflicts that we've been looking at in the first place. So you could just kind of, you know, on the one sense, people who may be not as poor, but feeling poorer than they were. And then we have the actual poor that are also not doing well. I get the impression of things feeling cold, dark, lonely, and rather desperate in a lot of places to share. It doesn't mean everyone's going to feel this way. At least I hope not. And we didn't, thankfully, we did not see any of the seriously overall depressive psych cards that we sometimes get. We did not get the cave. We didn't get the destruction card. You know, we, we didn't get those. So I don't think the entire time period is just going to be this kind of overall impressive period of gloom on the part of everyone. But I think there is, in fact, the distraction is, is going to help prevent that to a degree. But I think there is going to be a lot of recognition this year that many people are living like those kittens in the alley and really needing some help of some kind. I don't think everyone and everywhere will have hard times, but the specter of them is still hanging around out there and could even color, I think it will color areas like consumer spending in the first world. You know, on the positive side, it may also add to greater acts of charity, but I really think that this is going to be a really poor retail season in a lot of areas for that reason, because I think people... They may, you know, they started out in the spring, especially I know in Europe, feeling like things were improving. And now they're wondering if maybe things are really not so great after all. So there's a hesitation to move forward. Even for those who have things, they're not sure how long they will have them. So they're not going to, they don't want There, There's no feeling of wanting to take risks in this reading. There, there's a lot of desire for kind of stability. Um, finally, we move on to the runes. And this time we have our old friend Athala, which we've seen before, which is the rune of inheritance or the homeland. Now, in this reading, this makes such perfect sense. Athala is exactly what you would expect to see when the major theme would be nations, homelands, territories, and even the family itself. This rune is also about inheritance and the gifts we pass on to our children, or which we inherit by the family line. In terms of world event stuff, it also is about the inheritance of the homeland, of nations, much of what's behind the growing disputes and desperation that's currently going on. Whose border is where? Who should be in charge of where? Who is not part of this? Or the homeland is a huge part of ongoing conflicts. And my husband pointed out the kind of darker side of this rune can be also the reemergence of old conflicts and old nationalistic ideas that were thought to be put to bed. So that is also at play here. This has shown up more strongly in other readings during the past year, will say the tensions between state and local governments that I saw, the, the realigning of international friendships and treaties, and a general resorting out of human relationships and partnerships. It's like, what is your homeland? Who is your inheritance? Who is it from? And who are you now partners with? It looks like this continues on this path, but the final note from the runes as communications or ensuage may be the key to how things go forward in the near future. This has already been perfectly demonstrated recently this past week with the he said, she said going on between Turkey and Russia, even as I'm writing this on November 25th, 2015. But look for issues of communications, understanding, diplomacy, contact, etc., to start taking the center stage over the next few weeks. This is also why I think it less, less rather than more likely that there will be a large outbreak of war before the end of December. In other words, I don't think there's going to be a big war yet before December. If it does break out, if it, if, if, you know, the things just go against the wind and it does break out anyway, it will be because of a breakdown of communications and a rush to judgment that scales card that we got earlier. So there's a small potential there, more likely not, but if it happens, this will be why. My husband also points out, as I said earlier, the darker side of both runes could indicate this revival of national border issues or traditions that have long been sorted with. Again, that could play very much into this missed communication. Uh, although it could be some, you know, like I said, I I really get that feeling that if we do have a big battle or even a big event, that's what's going to cause it. So far, the energies point it 
then it's more likely that the Sage and Hermit cards are going to call a timeout for reflection. They're going to really try to do that for consideration, for realigning the players. You know, there'll be attempts at diplomacy for the time being, and I think there's going to be some rather surprises that come out of the power blocks and things that initially blow up to the surface. But right now, it's all going to be going on in the background. For individuals, these energies can provide a really great time for thought, reflection, partnerships within the family, and also for realigning your personal social networks. You know, finding out who your friends really are and sticking with them in, in a very strong way. Now, that Five of Pentacles suggests this is not likely to be a great time for personal financial purchases, large ones anyway. But the Lover's card twice and the Fodder card suggest this is a good time to hunker down and make plans with family and friends and look towards the future. It's just not necessarily a great time to start on new endeavors. The other thing about the Ansu's rune is it's often like just the rune of Odin or the Divine. So this is a good time also for looking for divine inspiration and wisdom. However you see the divine, this is a good time to stay in touch through meditation, prayer, going to your religious services as you know whatever sort you perhaps enjoy because th there's a lot of it's there's a lot of that out there and it isn't just the season though i think the season probably helps um and this also fits with the sage and hermit cards this is looking for wisdom both within the self but also without from the divine from the universe again for individuals this is a great energy time for looking for spiritual and intellectual inspiration and knowledge again that hermit card and the sage card we can only hope that the leaders of the world, both official and those who lead from behind the scenes, choose to likewise during this time. This is their time period. They can choose to do this. Let's hope they do. Remember, this reading is also for a very short time period, much shorter than usual. As always, I hope to do my yearly energy reading for 2015 sometime in early January. If things look real crazy, I'll try to do it even sooner. To sum up, if 2014 was what I called the year of fate changes in karma, then 2015 has turned out pretty much as predicted in theme to be the year when the wheel of fate began rolling until karma was played out. It looks, however, like this last month of 2015 has provided the world with a brief chance to slow the wheel down a bit, to take stock and seek wisdom if the world chooses to use it. Even if the wheel can't stop turning altogether, it's slowed down a bit. And there may be a chance to kind of redirect it a little, you know, if there's a, the will to do so. It, it's been year, all year, it's just been kind of running in the direction of things that were set in 2014. Now there's this brief window when it may be able to be sort of, you know, fuddled with a bit. However, these feel, this opportunity feels like human choices rather than natural ones. I don't think there's going to be a natural disaster that comes, you know, like an asteroid that comes out of the sky or something, uh, or the aliens are not going to land on the, on the White House lawn. This, these are going to be human choices, which this time, they could, time period could be ignored. And if the scales fall in the other direction, things could take a wildly different path. And if that happens, if things go against the wind and like there's miscommunication, a big war, or a big incident does break out, I'll try to do a second check-in before the month of December ends. I, I can't promise because of the situations going on in my life, but I, I will give it a try. Because like I said, this reading was a surprise to me. I was really expecting there to be more sense of, of danger, immediate doom, or whatever. That's just kind of my personality anyway, to a degree. But it wasn't there. It was really much more probably things will work on behind the scenes. But there is that small chance that they could explode. And if they do, I will I will try to come back. Whatever happens, this is definitely a time when things, like I said, could calm down a bit. Or they could suddenly fly well and go off a cliff. And, and that cliff is, you know, what I just can't predict for certainly. The energies are providing a moment of rest and reflection for those who want to use it. We should all take that and hope that the others, the leaders, will choose to do that well as well. I think that's enough of this topic for now. I, I didn't want to try to do a second half reading because, quite frankly, this is about as much as I can handle right now. But, and I may or may not be back next week. That depends on the house status of my family member. 
but I'm looking forward to trying to do at least a couple of shows to check in in December. And I have got some interviews lined up for the new year, so we can look forward to that as well. More on that later. But for now, stay tuned for next week here at Cat's Eye on the Future. You have been listening to Cat's Eye on the Future, the show where we take a look at what's coming up in your world and your future. Join us again next time for another episode of Cat's Eye on the Future. Thank you.